Hello, Mr. Wilson here, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Pixlr Editor. It's uh, sort of like Photoshop, except uh, way scaled down, and but it works on a Chromebook, so we're going to go ahead and go with it. The first thing we need to do is actually install the tool. So here we're in the Chrome Web Store, and we've looked up Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R. We're going to go ahead and add that to Chrome. Add the app. All right, now that it's been added, you can find it in your apps launcher drawer down here in the lower left-hand corner. We're gonna click on that little dot, click this little arrow right up here, and I can see it's on my second page of apps. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Pixlr editor. Here it's gonna ask me which tool I want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the powerful editor for pros. All right, here you can see that I was working on this demo project earlier. We're going to go ahead and redo that one. So here I'm going to open the image. Now you can load in any assets that you want. I've uh, pre-staged the Jason Momoa garden image that, uh, that we did earlier. Here's the garden picture here. I'm going to go ahead and load that one in. I'm going to go ahead and use my file manager to drag and drop the Jason Momoa picture into this as well. So I'm going to drag and drop Jason Momoa into my garden. Here the computer is going to ask me if I wanted to just open this as an entirely new document or if I wanted to add him to the current document. That's what I want to do. Add him to the current document. So my goal here is to create, do, uh, basically do a, a simple background replacement. I'm going to take um, Jason out of this city scene and put him into my garden. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and resize so that he fits inside of the garden scene, just like that. Now, my first goal is to uh, cut out his background. There are several tools that we can use for that. There's a little scissor tool cut out mask here. There's a wand selection tool. Um, I found that it's actually pretty easy to use this scissor tool and then use the AI auto button here and it will just automatically find who our subject is and select them. So um, we can try that first and if it works, then fantastic. Otherwise, we'd have to use some of the manual tools. I'm going to go ahead and hit the AI auto. Now the computer says that this is a premium thing, which means that I just have to watch an advertisement. For some reason, I don't see any ads. Perhaps it's because I have an ad blocker running, um, but either way, it's, it's processing and in just a few moments, it says that it's done and I can hit the continue button. And here you can see that it has removed his background and it's done a really good job. The, I noticed that there's just a little bit down here um, that I still need to remove. Now, one thing that I do want to show you is that uh, when you zoom in, uh, if I wanted to see that little uh, problem that I need to remove there, I need to be able to pan the screen. Um, so when I'm zoomed in here, if I hold the space bar down on my keyboard, that will turn my uh, mouse cursor into this little hand, and that will allow me to pan the screen. And as soon as I let go of the space bar, then uh, it goes back to the normal editing mode. Here I'm going to use this little magic wand selection tool and select that little area there. And then I can just go ahead and um, delete that. I use the backspace key on the keyboard to remove that. Just like in Photoshop, if you have a selection, you can see the marching ants here. And we're now done with it. I don't want that area selected anymore. If you press Control D, Control D for deselect, that will remove the selection area. Here I'm going to zoom back out. You can see that it's done a pretty good job selecting him out and stuff and I just had to make that one little manual adjustment there. Now one thing I do notice is that the um, uh, the color match is not good. He was t This picture was taken in a cityscape scene so there's a lot of gray light whereas my garden scene has a lot of reflected green light so we need to work on matching that as well. There are a variety of adjustment tools that we can use in Pixlr. So if I come up to this adjustment menu and come down to color balance there's a lot of different tools in here that you can use and you can play with all of them. I, I got good results earlier from the color balance menu. 
Uh, by default, it's going to start you off in the midtones, and you can start sliding these things around. I actually found it easier to to do this in order, starting here with shadows, then midtones, then highlights. So I'm going to go to shadows first, and I want to make sure that this little box here for preserve, preserve luminosity, I want to make sure that that is turned on. So here I've slid it to the right. It's kind of a little bit more lit up now. That will um, that'll get me some some better results and you can toggle it on and off to see what the difference is. So here uh, I'm on shadows and he needs more green light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the greens just a little bit and uh, just for comparison's sake if I uncheck that preserve luminosity you can see the the difference here. So it, it looks better with that option turned on. Uh, and then I can adjust the um, the reds. I don't want to make tremendous changes here just yet. I want to kind of keep things a little subtle because I'm still going to make additional uh, adjustments in my midtones and highlights as well. So I don't want to get too crazy right off the beginning. I can always come back to this tab later. Here I'm going to move to the midtones and we're going to just bump up our greens a little bit there. Maybe bring down the blues a little bit, a little bit. It should be noted too that I am colorblind, so trying to color match this stuff is going to be very difficult for me. So uh, you may see, like, what is that guy doing? But uh, yeah, you can feel free to dial this in any way you want. Let's make some adjustments here. It's a little too much when I start going down that way. Bring it up a little bit. And then I can go back and adjust. Um, if, if I think I went too far now with some of these other settings, I can bring them down a little bit as well. So you can always go back and make any adjustments you want. So here we're getting pretty close. I could spend a lot of time tweaking these settings just to get them just right. I'm going to go ahead and select apply. And you can see in just a few moments, we were able to cut him out and color grade him. Uh, there's This Pixlr doesn't seem to do as great a job around the hair as Photoshop does, but it's a free tool. And you can always zoom in here. Um, and you can use these little selection tools to fine tune it a little bit if you want, but it's it's not Photoshop. You're not going to get the same results. But uh, if you choose a subject that doesn't have their hair quite as wispy, maybe it's uh, pulled back, maybe maybe it's uh, gelled down or, or, or brushed tightly or something, then you're not going to get as many of those wispy areas and it will be easier for Pixlr to uh, crop that stuff down or mask it out rather. All right, so that's just a quick tour of, uh, of Pixlr. Of, of course, you go up to File and save your document like this, um, and then you can download it. You can save it in any format that you want, um, just like any other app. So there you go, this quick tour of Pixlr. Uh, have fun with it. It does a lot of cool stuff. You can experiment with some of these other options here. What's kind of nice, if you hover over one of the buttons, you get a little um, a little card that kind of shows you an example of what it does and tells you what that tool does. And don't forget the menus. There's lots of other tools up here that don't appear in the toolbar, and you're going to miss out on a lot of key features if, if you're not exploring the menus as well. All right, so have fun.